The Switchblade Kite is the most versatile performance kite on the market. It's taken people from their first water starts to countless broken world records and world titles. With some of our team riders covering all disciplines, we took it for one day and decided to see what we could get up to. This is the outcome. All of a sudden, we're all coming to Hatteras. Uh, it was about a two-week notice. Uh, I think that's probably some of the best trips because you don't really have time to build expectations. You just show up and you see what you get. You know, I think everybody from the Cabrina team, we are really just a bunch of friends. And I've always been just looking for that excuse, really, just to bring everyone here at once, have a great time on the water. And uh, I, I think this year, everything just lined up right with everyone's schedules, and we had, we had a really great time, for sure. In terms of Hatteras standards, we got a little bit unlucky for win. We showed up and basically had a week of no win. But I think, at least for Evan and myself, we always really enjoy kind of finding the random things, random fun little things we can do. So we got north wind, south wind, just spin circles, not really getting above like 10 or 12 knots. Typical kite trip where all this planning and organization is going into it, everyone's excited and stoked. And then as soon as with the forecast is within range, it's just like flat. I mean, it could have been worse, but it was pretty much as bad as it gets without being just a complete, complete, you know, zero wind event. Just figured we'd get out the foils, do some tow foiling, try a few kite tosses to each other. It's something that, that we've always had fun with doing and it's just kind of a great way to, to make the most of whatever happens. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to lose a kite today. Having the foils is always a great way to do it. Just since you're up on foil, you have the ability to, to pump, kind of chase the kite, position yourself a little bit easier. Kiahi went to throw it to me, and I was on a wave, and he dropped the bar to me, and it just went like so high over my head that I basically had no chance of grabbing it. And the second he let the kite go, he knew, like, all right, this thing is going far. And I just saw the, you know, just saw the kite floating and floating like crazy. And I just started kind of laughing and distracting myself and he was going after it for a while and the bar was just hanging there. The kite wasn't going upwind or downwind or anywhere, it was just kind of hanging steady. Like I don't think I've ever seen a kite so stable in the air and I guess that's kind of one of the things that shows just how how stable of a kite the switchblade is. It's able to just sit there and fly even without a rider holding onto it. Yeah, that was one of those just freak, freak moments where you can't you can't believe it's happening. You're like, how in the world is the kite just hanging in the air that long, that steady, but yeah. Did a lot of swimming for sure, but had some pretty good tosses and uh, just a way to keep it exciting really and just do something different and um, get your heart beating a little bit, especially when the wind's blowing offshore and you start seeing your kite gliding away. It definitely gets you a little, a little bit nervous and not recommended, that's for sure. But uh, we had some other people in the water and we, you know, we knew we weren't gonna like completely lose the kite, but uh, definitely, definitely made for a lot of work and good, a good challenge, that's for sure.
Yeah, with such a tough forecast this week, it was really nice to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We ended up, just to finish out the trip, had one really good day of nice southwest wind opens up just a whole range of different spots in the sound and you know something I really wanted to bring everybody out to do was just do some of the classic Hatteras downwinders it's pretty special not to have to worry about staying up wind and especially on the sound side here there's some really cool areas to explore with with a kite um, through the marshes and just you know down the coastline probably 15 years I've been kiting through that area going through all the channels and everything and I've never put my kite into the bushes and I'm always very careful not to because you're gonna rip it or pop it or just there's a lot of snakes in there it's not really where you want to be walking around swimming around next thing you know my line just like snags the tree branch and I'm just like oh my god I cannot believe I actually just put myself in this position well we worked out that the best option was to basically just throw the kite in the air I'd kite back around, pick him up in the channel, tow him out of there and we could pick it up on the other side and somehow it worked out. Another thing we found out is if you do for some reason have your bar in that situation, which is probably very rare because most of the time you're going to lose your bar with the kite as well. If for some reason you do, it's a great thing to just hook the chicken loop to the back of your harness, then you got a tow handle and yeah, you can tow yourself back down. Even I think for Evan it's a great way to practice a couple little tricks and hops to blind on the way down too. I was ready to get out of there pretty much as soon as I saw my kite going down. So yeah, that was, uh, I'll remember that one for sure.